Hey guys, welcome back to Jess Marie's Romance. I'm Jessen and today I have a huge historical romance book haul because I got an eBay lot by a specific historical romance author that I've never read before and I feel like I hit the mother load with this lot. It was just amazing. It was an amazing find. It's like 30 or so books. I don't know. We're going to count them as we go, okay? Catherine Coulter is a romance author that I have yet to read, but I know that some of her step backs have been featured on Step Back Saturday and also Jen, I think, used to own a lot of Catherine Coulter's and she got rid of them and now she's trying to collect them back. I actually sent her, I had a couple double copies with this lot and so I sent her some. So this is a lot of Catherine Coulter's and some of them are signed and I'm going to be showing them off to you. So I guess we could start off with this one. This is the Sherbrooke Bride or Sherbrooke Bride? Sherbrooke Bride, Sherbrooke Bride. Who knows? But this is beautiful. Like look how colorful. I love metallic covers and I already showed you the step back, but let's, let's go for another round. Look at the beautiful horse. Love it. Absolutely love the double page step back. Ugh, oh, gorge. Let's see, Douglas Sherbrooke, Earl of Northcliffe, is a man besieged. He must have an heir, thus he must provide himself with the requisite bride. Alexandra Chambers, youngest daughter of the Duke of Beresford, has loved Douglas Sherbrooke since she was 15. Unfortunately, it is his sis her sister, the incomparable Melisande, he wishes to wed. So this sounds amazing. I can't wait to start this one. I think I have the whole series. I think it's a trilogy. And they were also packaged in these lovely little book sleeves that um, shows which ones are signed. So this one's signed. See up top. And then I think this one's the second one. I feel like I'm going to have to pull up Goodreads to see. Okay, no, I was wrong. This is the second one. The Hellion Bride and Love. It, it Oh, it's like iridescent. Okay, I don't know if that's going to really show up on camera, but uh, not really. See? No, not, not too much, not too much. But, I mean, you get the gist of it. This beautiful seaside double step back double page step back love absolutely love it so writer sherbrooke fun loving rake with a secret he travels to jamaica to solve a mystery there's supernatural goings on in jamaica at a sugar plantation so warning all right these books were written 92 the year i was born so this was this was written in 92 and then we have the heiress bride which is the next in the series and then we have this C love and the step back. I love this one. This one's so cool. I just love it. It's like a little house on the prairie kind of her dress and her petticoat and stuff like that. And then of course the horse in the background. So this is the, um, this one says it, the exciting conclusion of the English Regency Bride Trilogy, The Heiress Bride, Sinjin Sherbrooke. Okay, so this is, um, the heroine is a girl who was like 15 in the previous books and now she's 19 and this is her romance. So very exciting. I'm just gonna grab these books randomly because there's a lot of them, like I said. And then I'm gonna have to take them out of all of their little plastic sleeves. Okay, I found another one that I saw was in the um, Bride series. I don't know if they're... Oh, is this... Okay, okay, okay. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> this one's called Mad Jack, and it actually has, like, some little, like, shiny stripies in there. It's really cute. I like it. So you see previous couples. Um, it's been four years since Sinjin's book. The next few books are all part of her Regency series. The first one is The Countess. Let's see. Ooh, looks spooky. I love this. This is very interesting. She has some very interesting step backs. Oh, are these like all notes from Catherine Coulter? Interesting. It says, Dear Reader, The Countess is my very first novel published in 1978 under the title The Autumn Countess. Even at the amazingly young age, I still realize that I should write about something I knew since I grew up reading Georgette Hare in my master's degrees in 19th century European history. It wasn't much of a mental stretch, a Regency romance. Well, sort of. Okay. It apparently was published, The Autumn Countess, as a gothic romance masquerading as a Regency. Okay, so this book was rewritten to be even more gothic in form, texture, and content interesting so that's why the cover looks so spooky and creepy 
Then we have the Rebel Bride and ooh, ooh, he's hot. <laughs> I like him. Very cool, very pretty. And let's see, is this one also a gothic novel? This one's not. This one was also um, published under another name. I don't think she mentions what it was called or maybe it was The Rebel Bride still, but she rewrote it. So this is also rewritten. Very, very cool. I find that fascinating that she had published them first and then they're rewritten. Ooh, I like this step back. And then we have, not the step back, the cover. And then we have the air and let's check out the step back. Ooh, these are very close up step backs and look the ruins in the background. I love that. That's really cool. Yep. The air first appeared as Lord Deverell's heir all the way back in 1980. I feel like I saw that name. Yes. Okay. So look, I have the original printing of this book. This is so cool. So yeah, she definitely rewrote it. Okay. Let's see. This is the first printing. It says a signet Regency romance. She sold her hand for a fortune and Regency England's most arrogant nobleman made her pay the price. Arabella Deverell saw Justin, a handsome stranger trespassing on her family lands. Let's see. Do we still have the same names? No. Okay, so it says quick-tempered Arabella Deverell saw Justin. And then they get married. And then this one says Justin Deverell. So their surnames have changed. And he's the Deverell. Says, I have extensively written this novel, given it greater scope and depth. But most important are the changes in the characters. They are now richer and fuller, brimming with life and passion. Ooh, this is the cousin romance. <laughs> this is the cousin romance. Interesting, interesting. So... That's really cool. This is, I have the first printing of that. That's, I knew I saw that name whenever I was digging through the box. Then we have the Duke right here. This one's very pretty. Ooh, lovely. I like this one. Look at all the little sheepies in the background. This is cool. I'm like really much more excited. Okay, originally titled The Generous Earl. This is cool. Now I want the like tiny books. Wow. I'm kind of going to be on the lookout for the original printings of it. So this one, the Duke was originally called The Generous Earl, also rewritten to be longer. This is okay. So that's cool. So all of the books that she rewrote must have been those really tiny short novella length novels. And then now she has rewritten them to full length. Ooh, Scottish romance. Yes. So this Scottish castle, um, Penderley Castle has a new master and it's an English Duke and he's the new Scottish Earl of Penderley, Ian Carmichael, Duke of Portmain and he is very proud. Brandy Robertson, the old Earl's granddaughter, takes one look at the Duke and her heart goes ballistic. The problem is the Duke is already engaged. If that isn't bad enough, someone wants to kill him. One of the embittered Robertsons. There are lots of juicy suspects to choose from. So this is, I think that a lot of Catherine Coulter has like that kind of mystery element in it, which makes sense because I'm pretty sure she has written some more like thriller books and I might have some of those. And then we have Lord Harry. Lord Harry is really Henrietta Rollins, a young lady who has assumed the guise of a gentleman to track down and kill Jason Cavender, the Marquess of Oberlin, the man she believes responsible for her brother Damien's death at the Battle of Waterloo. She wants to challenge him to a duel when he's lying at her feet, then and only then will she tell him why she's killed him and who she really is. Unfortunately, there's a really big snag says you will laugh at the Lord Harry's um, outrageous adventures together. Jason and Henrietta Rollin will touch you. They did me and will continue to do so. So this is really cool. I like how in the back it's a note. It's like written as a note to the reader and it says, dear reader, signed Catherine Coulter. So that's really neat. Really, really neat. Ooh, look how pretty. Kind of like looks Western, even though it is Regency. Okay, so these are more like a uh, romantic suspense. This one is Beyond Eden, and these don't have setbacks, but they have really beautiful shiny covers. Again, with the note um, from the author. So this is more like romantic suspense contemporary. So not all historical romance, very cool, very cool. And the heroine is a beautiful model and she hides behind a new name to protect herself from a path to trail and treachery and a present filled with sinister shadows. And then she teams up with an ex-cop who's turned private investigator who's hired to protect her. So a bodyguard romance, that's interesting. 
um, False Pretense. I just kind of grabbed this one because it has a similar looking cover. I don't know if they're in the same series. It says, Men Desired Her, Women Envied Her. The heroine is a concert pianist, but her wealthy husband is murdered and she stands accused. But it says that she was acquitted, but there's still whispers saying that she's guilty. And now three attractive men appear out of her past, offering to help her to protect her. But whom can Elizabeth trust when she alone knows that the real killer may be stalking her and that her late husband's ruthless family vowed to destroy her? So this happens in Paris and in New York, and you can see the Eiffel Tower like right here. This is interesting. I'm not one, I'm not super big on um, romantic suspense, but maybe that'll have to change. Then we have Evening Star. Is this? This one looks like it's Regency because it says Evening Star, formerly titled Sweet Surrender. Oh, so this is the first book in the former Star Trilogy. This is really cool. I love all of these descriptions for these books. It says, Gianna Van Cleve has fallen in love with the vicious fortune hunter and her mother, the renowned ship owner and builder, Aurora Van Cleve, is desperate to save her daughter. She agrees to support Gianna's wedding if Gianna agrees first to spend an unusual three months in Rome with her uncle Daniel. But Gianna's uncle takes this bargain far beyond what Aurora ever imagined. Thus, Gianna first sees Alex Saxton, not in a society drawing room, but in a brothel. The next time she sees him, she is one of the virgins to be sold to the highest bidder at the infamous Roman flower auction. He wins the bid and her, but not for long. Four years later, when Alex meets Gianna again in London, she has become a woman intent on success in a man's world. Alex is set on revenge. He will have her and nothing will stop him. What the heck? <laughs> this is a bonkers plot. So is this sex trafficking? What is happening in this one? Okay, I'm shocked. Shook it. I'm shook it. Let's move on to the next one. I'll go research more on that one. I'm finding some crazy ones. This one is Lord of Raven's Peak. This one has a really, really shiny front. Is there step back? Nope. Just kind of looks like there would be. Ooh, Vikings. Okay. Okay, so this is like captor captive romance. So is this dark historical romance. I've stumbled upon dark historical romance, I think, because um, the hero is a Viking and he's taken some slaves. And one of the slaves is uh, Lauren and she's a troubadour and she wants to tell stories to earn enough silver and gold to buy her and her little brother from Merrick. Only he refused to sell her and now that she's his, he must protect her when she's accused of murder, then save her yet again when he discovers her secrets. So all of these books have a bit of mystery element and bonkers plots to them. Let's see what we have here. The Wyndham Legacy. Here we are. So this one is the first novel in her Legacy series set in England in the Regency period. So it says Marcus Wyndham never asked to become Earl of Chase. The Duchess never asked to be illegitimate and neither of these two asked that their fates become so intertwined. Marcus is passionate, quick to rage, just as quick to laughter. He's tough, opinionated, domineering, known as the devil's own son. And the Duchess is serene and aloof and has silence down to a fine art. She's always in control. Her smiles are as rare as body jest in the pulpit. She's self-reliant. Once she realizes that a very special talent can make her so, a talent no one suspects. Surrounding this unlikely pair are three servants cast in the Shakespearean mold, Spears, Badger, and Maggie, all cocky, smart, good plotters, and better friends who don't know the meaning of subservient. Add to this the American Wyndhams, who can trust an American Wyndham, bucketfuls of intrigue, laughter, and love story that will bring you to withers. I hope that you enjoy yourself thoroughly in the Wyndham legacy. So not actually much information on what the romance is about in this one. So probably my least favorite description on any of these that I have picked up. Next we have Sweet Surrender. Wait, it's one of these. Is this the original book of Sweet? Am I? Hold on. This is it. Okay. These are the same books, but not the same at all. So this was the one with the auction of the Virgin Auction. Evening Star is the rewritten version of Sweet Surrender. So this is the original. It's much fatter. It has the same premise in the back. So I'm very tempted to read both of these and see what's the difference. I might be doing a reading vlog on this. I think that would be fun. This has turned into something I wasn't anticipating at all. 
I'm pleasantly surprised and intrigued and just kind of like blown over by what's happening here. Okay, then we have the deception and this one does have a step back. Very, very cool. And this is another one of the ones that she has rewritten and republished. It was originally one of those tiny novella length ones called An Intimate Deception. But this one says it's been completely rewritten as a full, a full blown historical romance. So this one says, the Duke of Portsmouth offers an impecunious half French relative a job as his young son's nanny. What he quickly discovers is that he wants her very badly. And then he also discovers that she's not what she seems. Evangeline de Beauchamp is in way over her head. She has far more to cope with than a 19 year old virgin should ever have. To top it all off, she must play an experienced widow with a man who knows women as well as he knows his own horses or so he thinks. Interesting. So a nanny and an employer romance, Regency romance. We still have quite a few more to go guys. <laughs> this one looks like, uh, another contemporary, maybe a romantic suspense. It's called, what is it called? Aftershocks. <laughs> and it says, right place, wrong time. When Dr. Elliot Mallory meets Georgina, she really likes this name, George Hathaway. Almost everything seems to be right. They like the same joke, shared the love of sports and chemistry drew them together it was the most powerful he'd ever known. But the one thing that was wrong, very wrong, at least in Elliot's mind, she was young and just beginning her career. If she tied herself to him now, she'd be cheated out of all that future, could, all that the future could hold. But if he let her go, what would the future hold for him? Very vague, but one of the more tame plot lines that I've read since opening up this box. Okay, this one says the courtship, and then I also see on the back here, it mentions the Sherbrooke Bride and Mad Jack. Okay, so these were characters that you see in the Sherbrooke Bride and Mad Jack, Hetherington and Helen Mayberry, and they team up to track down a mystical treasure that Helen calls King Edward's Lamp. So it says, Helen is a big girl only two inches shorter than Hetherington, a resolute task mistress, owner of her own inn. She adores her father, Lord Prith, and wants to find the lamp more than anything. It is her only passion until she meets Hetherington. Spencer, Hetherington, Lord Beecham, enjoys Helen's pursuit of him. He is a renowned womanizer, a resolute bachelor, and really enjoys his life. But when she throws him to the ground and sits on him, he finally admits that he also comes to her. She informs him. <laughs> These are so wild. <laughs> to his chagrin, that she doesn't want a lover, she wants a partner. But things work out a bit differently than either of them expect. Indeed, Hetherington, unused to being throtted, takes drastic steps to change his big girl's mind. What is up with this big girl in quotation? <laughs> Do they find Helen's lamp? I guess because she's tall and it says she's only two inches shorter than Hetherington. He must be a giant or something. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> These are cracking me up. Man, I was not expecting to laugh this much and just, yeah, I'm having a good time, guys. The next one's The Cove. <laughs> Um, I think that this one's a contemporary romance. It says, the Quove is a quaint, the Quove. <laughs> it says, the Cove is a quaint little postcard town made up of only old folk who sell the world's greatest ice cream, a secret recipe that brings lots of tourists into town. Into the Cove comes Sally Brannard, daughter of, of murdered Amory St. John of Washington, D.C., seeking sanctuary, and FBI Special Agent James Quinlan, who's undercover and after her. He's got a murder to solve, and he believes she's the key, but is she really? Are you ready to strap yourself in for nonstop romantic suspense? I'm going to scare you, treat you to mysteries that will hopefully confound you, have you smiling and nodding at an unlikely love story between two of the neatest people you'll ever meet. Cool. All right, I still have eight more to go, guys. So we're not we're not quite done. Okay, these are all the ones I did separate these out. These all have couples on the cover, very intimately embracing couples. I have to take a couple more out of their little sleeves. Okay, guys, I think I found more original printings. It was this one, Sweet Surrender. I remember mentioning Sweet Surrender when I was reading the backs of some of these books. So I'm gonna have to go dig through. It looks like Sweet Surrender is um, one of her original publications that she ended up by rewriting and I have the rewritten copy. So yeah, maybe definitely a vlog. Do I have the same book? I have this, okay. That's why it sounded familiar. This book is the same as 
this book is the same as this book. Okay. This is interesting. This is so interesting. Okay, so I think I have the correct order. Order. This one was published with Signet, and this is the original publication. So I'm gonna read the the um, synopsis and see if it differs from these two, because these two basically have the same synopsis. Then it was reprinted with Onyx. Um, this is, and then I think that this is the most recent uh, iteration, Evening Star. So this it was completely rebranded whenever it came to. Um, Topaz to Topaz. The original one. This is the original one. Let's see if it's different. His dark desire claimed her. He was the highest bidder for her beauty, and now Gianna was the property of the handsome, hot blooded American who had paid heavily to possess her exquisite body, who hungered to initiate her innocent flesh into flames of lust. His all consuming love tantalized her. When Alex's tongue lightly caressed her lips, Gianna parted them willingly. I feel like I'm doing a, um, just like a reading of a very hot, sexy scene possibly non-consensual. There are no way, there's no way that she could fight any longer against his brutal strength and power. Non-consensual. Gianna wanted him to touch her, taste her, adore her. She yearned for his iron heart embrace. She begged to be released from her fierce desire. So I would say it's highly likely that you're going to get a reading vlog of me comparing the original publication to these two. I'm only going to read one of these two and I'll skim and see if it's pretty much the same thing, just reprinted. Ah, uh, we have another slave romance. <laughs> I love that the, I love how people dress up women in slave garb, but it's kind of like the same kind of, it looks like a Princess Jasmine costume. So here we have Devil's Daughter, and you can see it's kind of like she's wearing a Princess Jasmine outfit. That's her slave outfit. It's kind of like George Lucas dressed Princess Leia up in her slave outfit, her sexy slave outfit. So this one, <laughs> says enslaving passion his imperious blue eyes raked over her trembling body she had never imagined that kamal the savage sultan so this is a sultan romance i'm gonna assume that the next few books that i have that have these couples these sexy couples on the front are going to be the most problematic books out of Catherine coulter's backlist so it says enslaving passion his imperious blue eyes raked over her trembling body she had never imagined that kamal the savage sultan who dared make her a harem slave would look so like a blonde Nordic god. She had never dreamed, that's interesting, he's in blonde sultan. She had never dreamed that the warm exploring touch of his hand could bring such moans to her lips and rob her of her will, inescapable love. He was aflame with urgent desire and he knew he would take by force what he longed to win by love, her golden loveliness had conquered his very soul, but her cruel taunts stung his fierce pride. Now her sweet essence, her tantalizing nearness ignited his need for her to yield her ripe innocence to him and him alone. Very problematic sounding. Just gonna put it out there. All right, then we have Midnight Star. Oh, it's so sad that these are going to be the most problematic one because they have some really beautiful covers, but... Um, yeah, I might read one to see how problematic it was because The Conqueror by Brenda Joyce might be the most problematic one that I've read so far, like in the older uh, historical romance category that I've started collecting on eBay. So, but these seem like they might blow The Conqueror out the water. I don't know. It says, Revenge has brought Chauncey Fitzhugh all the way from England to San Francisco in 1852. She had come with sole purpose of ru ruining the man whose deception had driven her father to suicide. Chauncey had vowed to destroy Delaney Saxton in the cruelest way a woman could by making him love her. So she flirted with him, aroused him, and enticed him to marry her. But now Delaney was demanding a husband's rights. Chauncey had plotted to reject Delaney's first advances, but as his caress became more insistent, her resolve weakened and the unforeseen had happened. She desired this handsome rogue she had sworn to hate and she could only pray she would have enough strength to betray him tomorrow. So not quite as problematic as Devil's Daughter. Then we have Jade Star. I really like this cover. Very cool. Love. This one says, beautiful Juliana Dupree knew she should give herself to Dr. Michael St. Morris, body and soul. He was everything a woman could want, handsome, kind. Now her husband as well, after rescuing her from her kidnapper, the brutal Jameson Wilkes. 
Even as Michael held her in his strong arms and claimed her lips in a breathless kiss, Juliana could not shed the painful memory of her abductor. Little did she suspect her fears would become reality when Wilkes once again threatened her. But her beloved Michael was there to save her, to turn her overwhelming terror to tingling desire in a love that was now free to flower like a wild blossom. Sounds interesting. Very different. Ooh, this one's very sexy looking. What is it called? Fire Song. Fire Song. Look at the castle in the background. Interesting. Look at these dudes. Ah, love it. Okay. This one says Tower of Desire. Cassia closed her eyes, her body trembling as Graylum caressed her lips with his fingertips, then lowered his head and kissed the warm, satiny softness of her flesh, where no man had ever touched her before. So these synopsis are just kind of basically like a snippet of sex scene. Interesting. Interesting marketing. She had not willingly chosen to become the wife of this bold English knight who had brought her to his castle, carried her to his waiting bed, and threatened to conquer her throbbing senses in a whirlwind of passion. Graylum's powerful arms crushed Cassia against him as he unfastened her velvet gown. Her beauty was breathtaking, irresistible, and aroused him to fiery passion, but her unyielding pride drove him to a savage rage. Marriage had made him a master of her body, but now a rising fire hot of hot need demanded more than submission. He must claim her complete surrender to the dark ecstasy of love. Non-consensual. I'm going to like have to separate these on... on problematic content to warn readers about and ones that would be okay for the modern day historical romance reader. Then we have Moonspun Mag Magic. I think that these are all part of a series, like the Magic series, because they all have magic in the title. There's some weird last names, but it says, Beautiful Victoria feared and fled the imperious desires of handsome, dashing Damien Carstairs, Baron Drago. But there was no escaping her desires when she was rescued on the lawless highways of the Regency England of Regency England by Damien's identical twin, Raphael Carstairs. Though Raphael matched Damien in strength and daring, he was gentle where Damien was violent, caring where Damien was callous. The icy terror that Damien inspired melted into the flames of passion that Raphael ignited. And in a whirlwind of adventure, intrigue, and danger that set brother against brother and good against evil, Victoria fought to find a way to make the overwhelming power and glorious fulfillment of love the winner interesting this is an evil twin romance i mean these plots are just you can't make them up then we have calypso magic and this one says diana savril vowed to stay away from her cousin the rakish and hot-tempered lionel ashton during her visit to london for she knew that lionel the sixth earl of saint levin was a rogue who used women as playthings and she would not become one of them, but she was homesick for the West Indies and with only Lionel to escort her on the perilous journey home, Diana's destiny becomes one with his as they brave the war-torn seas on a journey that would take them from glittering London to the tropical shores of Calypso Island. And as the fires of battle raged around them, they found love that burned most fiercely than any other. Diana surrendered to a passion within her that she could no longer deny. A cut, another cousin romance. I don't know how distantly they're related. And then we have Wild Star. This is the final Catherine Coulter book that I have in my possession. Let's see what this one has in store for us. It says, he had stopped kissing her, leaving her parted lips trembled, waiting for more. Oh, how she wanted him. But Byrony knew that Brent Hammond was the last man. Bryony? No, Byrony. Okay. She should not want this man, apparently. This handsome San Francisco gambler was legendary for all the women he had and used only to slake his lust and nothing more. And Byrony was married, married to an older man she didn't love, but whom she had vowed to honor and obey. At the moment, Byrony felt Brent's mocking eyes upon her, mentally stripping away her clothes, even as he taunted her propriety. The moment he held her in his arms, caressing her warm velvet flesh, she knew he was, she was his for the taking. And in San Francisco boomtown where he ruled as king, and on a great southern plantation where she discovered the secrets of his dark past, the flaming intensity of her love welded her to him for better or for worse forever. Another problematic one. Interesting. With cheating. Um, so I would have to say probably the ones that I'm most excited to read are um, the Bride series, the Sherbrooke, Hellion, and... Um, What's the other one? Oh, the heiress bride, the heiress bride. Of course, my battery's dying just as, let's see if I can close this out. <laughs> so guys, 
we have some new books to possibly read and see how they hold up to a modern day historical romance reader. I'm up for the challenge, especially for the ones that was rewritten and I have the newer copies of. So if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, make sure that you subscribe to get notified of any future videos that I do. Thank you so much for watching and remember, life's better with little HEA. Bye guys.